Now here's a crazy coke float. Three and a half tons of high-grade cocaine found floating in the Pacific Ocean. 81 bales of cocaine bricks were recovered by the Royal New Zealand Navy. It's one of the biggest ever drug seizures for the country, worth about 318 million US dollars. And here's another, just days later. Three men accused of collecting cocaine offshore of Australia were plucked from the sea clutching for dear life to a floating cooler. Not long after, bricks of cocaine started washing ashore, and police later found their capsized boat, allegedly stuffed with cocaine. The mob reporter here with news on the mysterious cocaine island, why it was just riding the waves, and where I think it was found but also of the humiliating cocaine cooler caper that seemed to involve the very same idea. Let me tell you about it. The enormous stash was made up of tightly wrapped bricks of cocaine assembled into waterproof bales, gathered in fishing nets, all held afloat by several dozen flotation buoys. It was covered with a black tarp presumably to camouflage it from an aerial sighting. After it was hauled aboard, inside, law enforcement and naval officers unwrapped the bales to reveal the bricks, some branded with a black four-leaf clover and others with a black Batman logo. It's likely this load was jettisoned from a container ship passing a prearranged point in the ocean, and the coordinates then shared with whosever job it was to collect it and move it on to its next destination. Somewhere along the way, that interception information seemed to leak out, because it would take a remarkable coincidence for authorities to just happen to spot it on the horizon. Although it looks pretty large close up, it is still just a speck in the sea, and it mostly lay below the surface, with a very low profile. Police aren't saying where it was floating. Authorities said it was in international waters northeast of New Zealand, and it took the Navy ship six days to bring it back to New Zealand. So let's look at the possibilities. Although it's a Navy vessel, New Zealand's Manawanui isn't really a warship. It's an offshore specialist vessel for diving, search, salvage, and exploration missions. The Manawanui has a speed of 14 knots, according to the Navy, meaning it can travel roughly 2,000 nautical miles in that six-day window. The straight line distance from the Manawanui's home port in Gisborne, New Zealand, east to the main Pacific port in Colombia, a primary source of cocaine, is about 6,256 nautical miles. So the load could have been dropped about two-thirds of the way from South America towards New Zealand and Australia. That range would include the waters near many of the lower Polynesian islands, such as Bora Bora, the Cook Islands, Samoa, over to Fiji. What a beautiful area to travel. If it was much further west than that, it's hard to imagine the Australians wouldn't have jumped in to grab it. That's my best calculation of the geography involved. But we might find out more, especially if they ever make arrests. But so far, no arrests have been made. Even so, somebody is going to be super upset. And with a load that big, probably a lot of somebody's. Police say it was enough cocaine to supply all of Australia for about a year. It is more cocaine than is typically sold in New Zealand over 30 years. It took a lot to get that tightly wrapped cocaine from where it was made to where it was found, and represents a lot of logistical planning, investment, risk, and subterfuge. That their plan broke down so thoroughly will send narcos scurrying to figure out what went wrong, and who to blame. Heads may roll. New Zealand authorities rightly said it shows the lengths narcos go to move their dope around the globe. Police say this immense load will now be examined, documented, and then destroyed. Although the find is fascinating, it is not particularly innovative. It's a method used before to drop off loads from a passing mothership to be collected by other boats, often several smaller vessels, such as sailboats or fishing boats, to then bring it ashore. Another probe of a similar scenario was underway in Australia. And while it is smaller, it's even more dumbfounding. Just this week, police said three men were rescued off Australia's southwest coast after they set off an emergency beacon. 
They were found clinging to a cooler and told rescuers they were out fishing when their boat capsized. Their story didn't really add up, and six days later, a bale of wrapped bricks of cocaine washed ashore in Western Australia, about 250 miles south of Perth. The next day, a 23-foot heavily damaged boat was found, overturned in a drift off Peaceful Bay. Inside the boat's cabin, police found another eight bales of similarly wrapped packages, each containing about 40 kilos of coke. All in, that's 365 kilos of cocaine police say were once on board. Arrest warrants were issued for the three men who were rescued two weeks earlier. One is the registered owner of the boat. He was just arrested in Darwin. Police allege they took the boat to an ocean rendezvous to pick up cocaine, in a similar scenario as to what was likely planned for the large cocaine island, before something went dramatically wrong with their boat. By the looks of the damage, perhaps they collided with the mothership. In any event, it wasn't a smooth trip. I documented another spectacular attempt at a coke float in a video this summer. That one featured two tons of cocaine that was to be dropped off the coast of England from a superyacht held aloft by 100 life jackets. That plot failed as well. But we have more answers from that caper because they caught the yacht and the men on board red-handed before they could dump it into the water. In that case, British police seized the 96 waterproof bags of coke, the crew, the ship, and boxes and boxes of life vests. But here's a strange twist. The ship that was caught with the coke off of England's coast had been converted into a luxury adventure yacht from its former life as a military ship. And guess where that ship served? In the Royal New Zealand Navy. What are the odds? Please share this video on social media to give it a boost. Please tap the thanks button, you should find it somewhere around this video, to send me a tip. And of course like, comment and subscribe. That all helps me too. Thanks for watching.